Have you ever wondered who's really funding the mass release of prisoners? In recent times, we've noticed a surge in the release of inmates from overcrowded prisons across various states. A notable instance is Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards, pardoning 56 inmates, including 40 convicted murderers, in just the past three months. It's a pattern that's raising eyebrows and questions. Who's supporting these officials making the releases? What's the motivation behind this sudden wave of leniency? Let's delve deeper into the money trail behind these releases. Governors across the country have been pardoning inmates, all they claim, in the name of prison population control. Let's start with Louisiana's governor, John Bell Edwards. Since October, Edwards has pardoned 56 inmates, 40 of whom were convicted murderers. His actions stem from a desire to reduce the state's overpopulated prisons. Edwards holds the belief that incarcerating more people does not necessarily make the state safer. The list of pardoned inmates also includes those convicted of arson, robbery, and drug dealing. Louisiana, for context, has one of the highest incarceration rates per capita of the world. But what of the broader implications of these pardons? Could there be a potential for increased crime rates or perhaps a shift in societal attitudes towards crime and punishment? And what about the victims and their families who may see these pardons as a denial of justice? These are questions that demand careful thought and consideration. To understand the full picture, we need to follow the money. Let's start with Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards. Since taking office in 2016, Edwards has prioritized reducing the state's heavily populated prisons. In the past three months alone, he's pardoned 40 convicted murderers, among others. But who's been filling Edwards' campaign coffers? The answer may surprise you. Now, one name that often comes up when discussing political funding is George Soros, a prominent billionaire and philanthropist known for his generous donations to progressive causes. However, when it comes to Edwards, there's no direct evidence linking Soros to his campaigns. That's not to say there aren't other influential figures involved. It's hard to say for sure without more transparency in political financing. So, while we definitively link Soros or any other specific billionaire to the actions of Edwards, what we can say is this. Money and politics are inextricably linked. And when it comes to decisions as serious as pardoning convicted criminals, we should all be asking who stands to benefit and why. As the saying goes, money talks. But what is it saying in this case? While we trace the money, let's not forget about the communities affected by these releases. The ramifications of these actions are not just numbers on a spreadsheet, but real people and communities facing real challenges. The sudden influx of released prisoners, many of whom were convicted of serious crimes, is a significant concern. The risk to public safety is an immediate issue, but the long-term impact on the fabric of these communities is potentially even more damaging. Take, for instance, the case of Louisiana. With one of the highest incarceration rates per capita in the world, the governor's decision to pardon 56 inmates, 40 of whom are convicted murderers, is a notable shift. It's not just about the individuals who have been pardoned, but also about the communities they return to. These communities now face the task of reintegrating individuals who have spent years, if not decades, behind bars. This is no easy feat, and the strain on resources is immense. And let's not forget about the role of fear in all this. The knowledge that convicted criminals are returning to the community can create a climate of fear and uncertainty. This is especially true for the victims of these crimes and their families who may feel their sense of safety and justice undermined. So, who's really paying the price for these releases? It's not just the individuals released or the officials making the decisions, it's the communities left to navigate the aftermath. It's the victims and their families. It's the everyday citizen whose sense of safety and stability is shaken. And it's a price we must all bear in mind as we consider the implications of these actions. Now that we've uncovered the money trail and its impact, what's next? Our journey into the world of prison pardons and commutations has led us to some startling revelations. It's clear that there's more at play here than just a desire to reduce overpopulated prisons. As we've seen, the decisions made by our governors have far-reaching implications. These are not just political decisions, but ones that directly impact us, our families, and our communities. But let's not forget the elephant in the room, the border security issue. As we've noted, the lax border security is another area of concern, potentially allowing individuals with criminal backgrounds to enter the country. It's not a stretch to imagine that these two issues could be interconnected, and that's a possibility we need to consider seriously. So, what can we do in the face of these revelations? Well, the answer is simple, but crucial. 
we need to stay vigilant. Vigilance is our best defense against the unknown and in this case it's doubly important. We need to keep our eyes open, question what we see and not take everything at face value. But vigilance alone is not enough. We need to take steps to protect ourselves and our communities. We can't control the decisions made by our governors or the actions of those who may have ulterior motives. But we can control how we respond. We can arm ourselves with knowledge and yes we can literally arm ourselves to ensure our safety and the safety of those we care about. And finally, we need to hold our elected officials accountable. We need to ask questions, demand answers, and make sure that those in power are working in our best interests. If they're not, we have the power to make a change. The power of the vote is a formidable one, and it's one we should not take lightly. In the end, it all comes down to us. We're the ones who have the power to make a difference, to protect our communities, and to ensure a safer future for all. It's a big responsibility, but it's one we're more than capable of handling. Remember, knowledge is power. Stay informed, stay vigilant, and protect your community.